let me play one clip because this happened recently. We had yet another insider. I've lost track of how many people now have admitted that there was a peace deal between Russia and Ukraine in early April 2022 that could have shut this whole war down, prevented all these tens of thousands of deaths that have ensued since. But this Russia-Ukraine peace deal was blocked by the U.S. And here is uh, a Ukrainian ambassador who uh, was part of the Ukrainian delegation. He was there in Istanbul. And in his telling, Putin went out of his way to make peace. And they signed an agreement. They, they had a deal in, uh, in Turkey. But that's when, as we all know now, Boris Johnson came over to Kiev and told Zelensky to keep fighting. Uh, and this ambassador's name is Alexander Chali, Alexander Chali. I, I can't pronounce it. I apologize to Ukrainian speakers. But here he is admitting, becoming the latest person to admit that there was indeed a peace deal in Turkey, which was blocked. I was in that moment in the group of Ukrainian negotiators. We negotiated uh, with Russian delegation practically two months, in March and April, the possible peaceful settlement agreement with, between Ukraine and Russia. And we, as you remember, concluded so-called Istanbul communique. And we were very close in the middle of April, in the end of April, to finalize our war with some peaceful settlement. For some reasons, it was postponed. But to my mind, Putin, this is my personal view, Putin in one week after started his aggression in 24 February last year, very quickly understood he did mistake and tried to do everything possible to conclude agreement with Ukraine. And wow. Ukraine, it was his personal decision to accept the text of this communique, which totally far away from the initial proposal of Russia, ultimatum proposal of Russia, which they put before the Ukrainian delegation in Minsk. So we managed to find a very real compromise. So Putin really wanted to reach some peaceful settlement with Ukraine. It's very important to remember. Okay. So how many times did he say there, Putin really wanted to reach a peace deal? He did everything possible. Uh, and then he says very briefly that for some reasons it was postponed, or he doesn't detail that part, but we know what happened there. That's when, as I said before, Boris Johnson came over and told Kiev that we're not going to back you up on this, that to sign this deal, Kiev, Ukraine needed security guarantees from the US and the UK. And he, Zelensky was told by Boris Johnson, no, we're not going to give you that. You have to keep fighting Putin. And because Zelensky followed Boris Johnson's orders, that's when Ukraine got this massive new influx of NATO weaponry, tens of billions of dollars, you know, those big packages that everybody in Congress on the Democratic side voted for, including the squad, to reward Zelensky for his obedience in blocking this peace deal in which this Ukrainian diplomat admits Putin did everything possible to make peace. Uh, and the U.S. did everything possible to prolong this war because their only goal was not to defend Ukraine. It was to bleed Russia. And it newly calls into question all the statements from Antony Blinken, who said that there's no meaningful evidence of that Russia wants diplomacy. Well, this is more meaningful evidence that we've just seen right now from a Ukrainian official who was there. And the New York Times recently came out with more, saying that Putin has been floating the idea of a ceasefire since September 2022. And all throughout that time, the policy has been the same. Just keep sacrificing Ukrainians as cannon fodder to bleed Russia. And what we've been seeing from the Ukrainians is in their messaging kind of threats against the U.S. If you do not authorize more aid, I mean, this was Zelensky's message when he last arrived in Washington, authorize more aid, give us more weapons, or we will attack deeper into Russia and kind of and escalate. And so these attacks that we saw in Belgorod on a family Christmas festival with MR MLRS rockets, which are less precise than Russia's Kinzhal missiles, for example, in which they attacked civilians deliberately in the center of a Russian city was an attempt to drag the U.S. back in. And what happened? It led to a massive escalation by Russia against military targets inside Ukrainian cities. And the U.S. continues to back away. The U.S. is being, and Russia is demonstrating that their arsenal is full and that they can hit back hard and escalate. And 
after the failed counteroffensive, I don't see how Ukraine can escalate to the point where there will be World War III unless they do something even more dramatic than they're doing because at the, at the same time, Russia is still practicing escalation management uh, with, with these strikes. I mean, they're not going to just send their entire military into Kiev, but they are. They're, it looks like they're starting an offensive of their own. So um, I think right now the more imminent threat, I mean, we're, I think we've been in World War III for some time and S Syria was sort of the beginning. Hmm. If you consider that all the forces at play inside Syria, it was, it was at least a preview. And World War III will not play out the way World War II did. But the more imminent threat right now is a regional war, which Israel has every intention of instigating. 